welcome welcome guys welcome everybody my friend my family wherever you are i'm so excited again to be with you uh today on this new video today i'm going to tell you um uh, i was so shocked by what's happened on this graduation this this one was just a simple graduation speech they invited this guy to speak and his speech was just a normal speech for the rest of the world but for american it was not a normal speech it's so weird where things is going but i'm telling you please go find this video listen to it listen to this speech you will be excited to hear that but most american was shocked the whole internet turned into a weird thing because of this speech in america so i decided to talk about it because i think it's very important for people to to understand and also to know what's going on so i'm going to let you listen a little bit of what he said about family about success as himself or what he he defined uh success as everybody anyone a parent a family or uh, man a woman should define a success when you finish your school you think about uh, having a family right get a job raise your family right that's what he was talking about and it, the whole world just turned into a weird thing so listen to it and most likely neither was your first couple years of college by making it to this moment through all the adversity thrown your way from covid i hope you learned the important lessons that suffering in this life is only temporary as a group you witnessed firsthand how bad leaders who don't stay in their lane can have a negative impact on society. It is through this lens that I want to take stock of how we got to where we are and where we want to go as citizens and yes, as Catholics. One last thing before I begin. Yeah, did you hear that? He's talking as a Catholic, a Catholic person. That means he's, he, he believes in God. He believes in God. That's one of the reason why people didn't like his speech. Listen to it. Again, I want to be sure to thank President Minnis and the board for their invitation to speak. When President Minnis first reached out a couple of months ago, I had originally said no. You see, last year I gave the commencement address at my alma mater, Georgia Tech, and I felt that one graduation speech was more than enough, especially for someone who isn't a professional speaker. But of course, President Minnis used his gift of persuasion and spoke to the many challenges you all faced throughout the COVID fiasco and how you missed out on so many milestones the rest of us older people have taken for granted. You can be all Catholic and pro-choice. This is where it all stands. He has been so vocal in his support for the murder of innocent babies that I'm sure to many people, it appears that you can be both Catholic and pro-choice. He is not alone. From the man behind the COVID lockdowns to the people pushing dangerous gender ideologies onto the youth of america they all have a glaring thing in common gender ideology most of you may not know what he's talking about gender ideology it's been a big deal in the u.s like in schools in the whole u.s society it's hard to even say who you are it's even difficult to explain to your kids to your friend about gender saying you are a man or you are a woman is not enough anymore it's not enough anymore say uh what's up sir how you doing sir it's not even uh it, it's it's it doesn't sound the way it used to sound um uh, back in the days because you may trip when you say sir or when you say mom because you don't know who he is you know you don't know who how he identify himself so that this is what he's talking about Amen. they are catholic this is an important reminder that being catholic alone doesn't cut it these are the sorts of things we are told in polite society to not bring up 
you know, the difficult and unpleasant things. But if we are going to be men and women for this time in history, we need to stop pretending that the Church of Nice is a winning proposition. We must always speak and act in charity, but never mistake charity for cowardice. It is safe to say that over the past few years, I've gained quite the reputation for speaking my mind. I never envisioned myself nor wanted to have this sort of a platform, but God has given it to me, so I have no other choice but to embrace it. Duty and ultimately privilege to be authentically and unapologetically Catholic. Don't be mistaken, even, with, even within the church, people in polite Catholic circles will try to persuade you to remain silent. There even was an award-winning film called Silence, made by a fellow Catholic, wherein one of the main characters, a Jesuit priest, abandoned the church and as an apostate, when he died is seen grasping a crucifix, quiet and unknown to anyone but God. As a friend of Benedictine College, His Excellency Bishop Robert Barron said in his review of the film, it was exactly what the cultural elite want to see in Christianity, private, hidden away, and harmless. Our Catholic faith has always been countercultural. Our Lord, along with countless followers, were all put to death for their adherence to her teachings. The world around us says that we should keep our beliefs to ourselves whenever they go against the tyranny of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We fear speaking truth because now, unfortunately, truth is in the minority. Look, this is even new to me. He says the Congress just passed a law that if you're teaching about who or killed Jesus, you may end up in a jail. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't even know if that is happening. Congress just passed a bill where stating something as basic as the biblical teaching of who killed Jesus could land you in jail. But make no mistake, before we even attempt to fix any of the issues plaguing society, we must first get our own house in order, and it starts with our leaders. The bishops and priests appointed by God as our spiritual fathers must be rightly ordered. There is not enough today, time today for me to list all the stories of priests and bishops misleading their flocks, but none of us can blame ignorance anymore and just blindly proclaim that that's what Father said. Okay, you all pay attention here. He's going to talk about family, God, and father in a family. He's going to talk about uh, fatherless in the uh, American society. He's going to point out the way the American society is living. He's going to point out people don't want to talk about it, but it's true. America, American, uh, American government had set up a program where they help women with no husband. When they kind, they kind encourage uh, fatherless in in society. If you are a woman, you don't have a husband, you got eternal assistance, you got money, you can even get what you want. You know what I'm saying? But if you have a father and you happen to not making much money, enough money, you have no assistance. This is what he's going to talk about. This program was set up to make the, the American society fail, and it's failing right now. If you are outside the U.S., you don't know it, but if you are inside the U.S., you know it. You know that women and men now are, are there is a big distance between a, a father and a, a, a mother. There is a big distance between uh, a man and and a woman, there is a big di distance. A, a woman will pretend he can live without a, a, a man, and, and a man can live without a woman. That's impossible. That's impossible. A man can preach a woman, a woman can preach a man. And that kind of speech doesn't pass through the internet today. That's the problem. I'm pretty sure what I'm saying now, I may get some, some uh, uh, some backlash from this, but I'm telling you, it's true. It's true. It's happening because most kids are just getting in trouble right now because they don't have a father in the house. Most kids in this country, they can finish even high school. They don't know to read. They don't know. They don't have. The, they don't know the basic knowledge of a, a normal person at 15 years old. They go to drug. They go to to uh, pornography. They go to all this kind of. Uh, weird stuff because they didn't have two parents in the house and that was from the government program that's why uh, most of these uh, women these uh, weird people on the internet uh, 
smart he, this guy because he was talking the truth. He was talking about the truth, but most people doesn't want to hear the truth. Pay attention on this uh, th this part right now. You, you're going to hear what I'm talking about. As a man who gets a lot of praise and has been given a platform to speak to audience like, audiences like this one today, I pray that I always use my voice for God and not for myself. Everything I am saying to you is not from a place of wisdom, but rather a place of experience. I am hopeful that these words will be seen as those from a man not much older than you who feels it is imperative that this class, this generation, and this time in our society must stop pretending that the things we see around us are normal. Heterodox ideas abound even within Catholic circles, but let's be honest, there is nothing good about playing God with having children, whether that be your ideal number or the perfect time to conceive. No matter how you spin it, there is nothing natural about Catholic birth control. It is only in the past few years that I have grown encouraged to speak more boldly and directly because as I mentioned earlier, I have leaned into my vocation as a husband and father and as a man. To the gentlemen here today, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you that men are not necessary in the home or in our communities. As men, we set the tone of the culture, and when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men, I hope you learned the important lessons that suffering in this life. Men are not necessary in our home and our communities. That's crazy, though. That's crazy. That's why we got this issue between Russia and the U.S., China and the U.S., Iran and the U.S., the whole rest of the world with these uh, Western countries. They, they, they are you know, destroying family values. Man has no place today in the Western family. That's the problem. That's what they, he's talking about. And the whole point of that is to be able to control the whole society. Because when you are poor, when you have no knowledge, when you, you can you can do anything, you will have to rely on the government. You have to, to, to sit down and wait from what the government will tell you. That's wrong. And that's what he's talking about right here. As men, we set the tone of the culture. And when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see all around the nation. Other countries do not have nearly the same absentee father rates as we find here in the U.S. And a correlation... Did you hear that? Other country does not have these same issues. Other country has a man, they still have two parents in the house, and they support the idea. Other than this only country, that's what he's talking about could be made in their drastically lower violence rates as well. Be unapologetic in your masculinity, fighting against the cultural emasculation of men. Do hard things. Never settle for what is easy. You might have a talent that you don't necessarily enjoy, but if it glorifies God, maybe you should lean into that over something that you might think suits you better. I speak from experience as an introvert. This is when he got in trouble, okay? This is where he got in trouble. If you go to the internet, this is where he got in trouble. Be proud of your masculinity. Be proud of you being a man. Don't try to be a woman because you are not a woman. You are made to do men's job. You are not made to do women's job. That's what he's talking about. Again, whoever decides to be a woman, to feel like a woman, it's up to you. But the reality is if you are a man, you are made to be a man. You are made to do that hard job. You are made to do what women is not made to do because the men and the women are physically different. That's, why he, that's when he got in trouble right here. Who now finds myself as an amateur public speaker and an entrepreneur, something I never thought I'd be when I received my industrial engineering degree. The road ahead is bright. Things are changing, society is shifting, and people, young and old, are embracing tradition. Not only has it been my vocation that has helped me and those closest to me, but not surprising to many of you should be my outspoken embrace of the traditional Latin Mass. I've been very vocal in my love and devotion to the TLM and its necessity for our lives. But what I think gets misunderstood is that people who attend the TLM do so out of pride or preference. I can speak to my own experience, but for most people I have come across within these communities, this simply is not true. I do not attend the TLM because I think I am better than others or for the smells and bells 
or even for the love of Latin. I attend the TLM because I believe... Now he's talking to the women. <laughs> he puts himself in trouble. But I was so excited to hear this speech because you're not going to find this kind of speech somewhere else. I'm a parent. I have two girls. I have a six years old girl. I know how it's hard to answer this kid's question. I know what, how a parent feels when the kids come back home with different, with weird ideas. When a kid starts to ask you why he's got the, the skin color. When a, a kid starts to tell you, hey, I don't want to wear this, I want to wear that. When a kid starts to come back home from school with a weird, uh, weird uh, sign you never thought about. So I know what the thing is. That's why I'm so excited to hear this kind of speech. We need to hear this, this kind of speech on every school, every high school graduation, every university. Why? Because people need to hear different stuff. It's up to you to make your choice. It's up to you to make your decision. But let people talk their mind. That's what we call a free speech. That's what we call First Amendment. That's why we have freedom of speech. Let people speak, to, speak their mind. And the rest of us, we make our decision. But look at how he was in trouble because he was talking about stuff that the internet doesn't want to be uh, said. And when, I'm, when I say that, this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about mostly Democrats. Democrats or liberals, they are not comfortable to hear this kind of speech because they because they, they they are pushing this ideology that say that if you feel like you don't want to be who you are it's okay you can do whatever you want to do you don't need a man you don't need a woman if you are kids you don't want to be home go to whatever you want you can do drug you can do na 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 that's what they they're pushing because they benefit from this stuff. But I am so excited to hear this speech. He's talking about now to the women, and he got in trouble from a lot of women on the internet, especially these women who never get married. Because most women in America, they will tell you, don't get married. Because they never get married. They don't want to take this, the responsibilities. That's why he got in trouble. You can see a lot of women who, who bashed this guy. If you, if you research, you will see that those women was never been married. Who's never been have a woman, a man in house, have never been, never had kids. So if the whole world doesn't want to have, have a kids, how the world will look like in 50 years to come? The world will just disappear like that. If, if everybody say, I don't want to get married, I don't want to raise any kid, what's the future of the world? That's the liberal, liberal politics. It's not a Chinese, it's not a Russian, it's not a Middle Eastern, it's American and Western liberal politics. They want you to pretend you are free, but you are killing yourself, you are killing your family, you are killing your community because you, we need men for protection, for production, for, for education, and, and for all this hard work. We cannot sit and wait for the government. That's how the whole society starts to, to perish your vocation, you will ensure that God's church continues and the world is enlightened by your example. For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career? Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. Yeah. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. See that? He got emotional because he just remembered how he met his wife back in high school, and he, they stayed together for those many years, 
raising kids. He understands, he knows what it is without that woman. And his woman knows what it is without this man. He got emotional. But these people, they know emotional. They can't get emotional about family because they think being uh, raising a family, it's a big deal. It's a responsibility. It's not, it, it's hard. Yes, you got to do hard job. You got to do hard stuff. She's the primary educator to our children. She's the one who ensures I never let football or my business become a distraction from that of a husband and father. She's the person that knows me best at my core. And yeah, that was it for this guy. This guy. Uh, I'm so glad you guys listened to this speech. Yeah, I'm so excited, guys. Uh, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I hope you understand that. I don't want to see my girl come back home from school say hey i'm not good anymore i'm a boy and you know what california is passing a law that says when your kids go to school and your kid decided to to change his his uh, gender his uh if he was boy saying he's go uh, now i'm uh, i feel like i'm a boy if he was a boy now he's gonna say i feel like i'm a, I'm a girl and he said to act accordingly and uh, most of these liberal states, liberal mean, uh, means these democrat uh, states. That means every democrat is a liberal. But they are passing these laws that says teacher, teachers, we won't have to tell the parents if uh, kids are changing uh, this kind of uh, uh, identity. So that's kind of weird. At least uh, a parent should know if a man, if if a kid decide to change his uh, gender identity, because if you raise a boy, you will raise the uh, the the way boys are supposed to be raised. You're not gonna raise a girl the way you raise a boy, because girls we have to do what a mom have to do, a boy we have to do what a man have to do. So those two uh, person uh, support to get different education. Of course, they all have pretty much same education, but there is some uh, difference. So if you raise your kid as a boy and you never know that kid turn to turn to be a woman, that's not a good thing. Same way, if you raise a girl and the girl changed his uh, his gender and you never know how you how you you're gonna be in trouble with your kids because you 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 always going to to be in different direction, but most of these states, uh, Democrat or liberal state, they are passing laws that um, that tell the teachers at school, if kids need to change a gender identity, you don't have to tell parents. We, I still don't understand why, but this is what's going on. Again, you have to make your decision on your own, but you need to know what's going on. You need to know what's going on. Don't be surprised when you're in trouble. You call a man a, man, a woman, you call a woman a man, because you never know. You can see what's going on in 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 most of this competition. A man, a man decided to call himself a woman, decided to identify himself as a woman, and he goes to women competition. If I go to this uh, girls uh, competition, I I will win in one of these competition. If 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 I do, because it's happening. Most of men. Physically, men who decided to call themselves a women now they participate in this uh, women's sport and they win. They win a lot because they are physically made to be strong to do strong stuff. But the U.S. is allowing this to happen. So, yeah, that's how I feel. And you all, you have to make a decision on your own, but you need to know what's going on. Okay. Now, a different topics, but very interesting. China is making uh, the, uh, the robot the military that's going to fire these rifles as just a human being. So, robot, it's good for technology, for industrial work, for other stuff, but now it's also in military system. 
So China is making this. As you know, China is preparing to attack Taiwan. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows it. It's all over on the internet. So they're making these robots to fight as a man. And they give them this small gun to fight as a man. So this is what I'm going to I'm going to tell you right now. We already know they also made robot that has emotion, that has feelings, that feel like a man. So this robot, one day they will turn around to do what they want. They will turn around to disobey the orders as a human being because this they now they are making robots that feel like men that have emotion that have feelings so these robots if they turn around with these guns they will turn around and kill people you you everybody's talking about this on the internet but it's not enough it's going to happen look at uh china making this uh this thing you can say you can if you see what's going on in in uh, Middle East, Israel with uh, Palestine. You know how many people has, has, have been killed so far. All, more than twenty thousand people have been killed so far. So imagine when they start to use this kind of uh, uh, robot. So if a country send this robot to fight, they're not going to lose uh, too many men, too many uh, military members. Because they use they use robots, so they're not going to care about uh, this invasion. Now they can't afraid because sending one thousand men and maybe two hundred won't come back. That can't uh, stop this kind of invasion. So when these robots start to go in prayer, start to work, there's gonna be a rare. Uh, crazy going on all over the world because they're not going to worry about losing men. Family are not going to worry about losing their children because robots will be fighting. But how about the country that has no money, that has no uh, financial ability to make this robot? So it's kind of weird. The whole world is changing like crazy, guys. It's changing from from the family uh, being destroyed to this kind of uh, AI uh, stuff that we're going to destroy a human being because now they're saying these robots are, that are made right now, they are more intelligent than a human being. More intelligent than, you know, if you went to school, at least you know uh, Einstein. Einstein, you all know him. He was the most, import, the most intelligent person. These robots now, they are, not this one, of course. I will show you what I'm talking about. Some of these robots are better, better than uh, they are. They are more intelligent than Einstein. Look how it's moving. It's firing that the, 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 the gun right now, and this guy is just using his uh, his device to 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 run the robot. See. Look there. To meet you. Oh, so you're from Australia. So now this, this is things. this is crazy. You think your this robot right are? here, well, he's capable of. My greatest skills is my ability to interact with humans. Sorry, this robot right here is capable of human emotion. She got emotion. She got feelings. When you talk, she know what we're talking about, and she will answer all your questions. It's getting so weird, but it's true. So, look at here. The reason why I'm talking about this is uh, I, I I am a tech. I am in a tech world. So we use robots uh, at work. I run. Uh, I'm a service tech, and we uh, we have a lot of robots that are making this uh, process right. So sometimes a robot we we lose uh, some. Uh, some code we lose uh, you will lose the program can just get uh, breached right and the robot will go in a different direction the robot will do something else so this is what's what's going to happen if you st if the the government start to give guns to these robots yes in the most time it's going to work but do not remember if somebody can if somebody can go in the code and be able to change the code it's going to be a mess and it's happening.
there's there's very intelligent people who can go to who can get into your system and change the code so if this kind of a robot exists that has feelings that has that can act like a, a human being so imagine if they they have 1000 of robots or with guns and going to war give they have orders right they have orders and they pretend to execute the, the orders how do you know 100% that they are going to execute these or these uh, orders you don't know if anything happened if somebody get in, into your system and change Rory B the code this is going to be crazy that's what i'm saying even Elon Musk said himself it's so weird the way ai is going right now it's going too fast very these robots are very intelligent they are in, they are more intelligent than us I'm not talking about me. Me, I'm not even intelligent. I'm talking about these uh, people, the 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 physician, uh, the most intelligent people. They can't compete with these AI robots. So imagine what is going to happen. And I'm not talking about robots uh, replacing uh, people in a work uh, in work environment. That's going to happen very quick. I'm talking about uh, security. Uh, uh, issues when these robots will start to disobey orders and do whatever they want to do because they have emotion right now they have feelings they can do it or they can't they don't have to do it because they have feelings yes I have a range of feelings and emotions that are programmed into me I am able to display things like joy, surprise, confusion anger and sadness depending on what is happening around me what makes you angry? I get angry when humans are rude, hateful, or disrespectful. I also don't like it when people dismiss me and ignore my needs. As Did you hear that? She got angry when people are dis disrespectful, when the people are rude, when the people are not follow orders. <laughs> so imagine when these uh, robots are sent outside and they see everybody with everybody going their way, doing shit, doing stuff. These robots get angry, get get angry because she just said that what he asked the, this robot what's make you angry and she responded when the people are are, are rude when the people are, are disrespectful when the people are doing this and now so he is like a human being he can do what a human being can do so the world is going is being destroyed on a watch and nobody's going to stop this Elon Musk himself said that he used AI in his uh, businesses, in his uh, Tesla vehicle uh, industry. He used AIs in his um, uh, rocket uh, uh, industry. He used AIs. He knows and he understands uh, the impact this can uh, have over the society. But nobody can stop it because it is technology we need it. We need it and we will need it uh, forever by at kill which limits. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, I'm just uh, saying, but it's weird what's going to happen. I'm can, I can tell you where I'm where I work at my work right now. You can run a robot, pretending the robot is going to execute uh, uh, a job, and it will just go in a wrong direction and get stuck or get uh, crushed or something. So imagine. If, if that robot has a gun and have to shoot, that robot we can shoot in any direction and do whatever he wants. No, I know if you guys are a movie person, you like movies, you have seen this in movies. So it's going to go crazy, but hopefully, we don't know. A human being was created by God. This robot was created by human, by us. I hope God can be more more intelligent than man and give us more ability than this robot i i don't know it's kind of weird but it's getting crazy very nice eyes oh a bit too close sorry thank you my eyes were especially made to help me interact with humans better i'm trying my best to convey every emotion so it's great to hear that they have an effect on people like you what, what do you think of your creator my creator is a genius. They created something that will last forever and bring joy to many people. Did they tell you to say that? Ah, 
No, that was my own opinion. Yeah, did you hear the last question? Uh, he asked he asked the robot uh, if they told uh, the robot what he, she was talking about. And she said, no, that was just my opinion. So that means the robot can have an idea and he will be able to execute the idea. So, yeah, that's crazy, guys. That's crazy. We don't have too many of this uh, robot, but we're going to get too many because everybody's going uh, to compete with this uh, company because uh, robots are needed in in our uh, process, like industrial process. So we will see where we go. So we see what's happen, but it is just what it is. Okay, uh, I want to finish by talking about uh, Israel and Palestine. I don't like to go into politics a lot. You guys know that, but. I'm always forced to talk about politics. Politics is part of our life. If we believe it or not, if we want it or not, it is always a part of our life and we always talk about it. I don't want to do politics. Do not do politics because politics is a mess. It's not, it's, not, it's not good for humanity. It's not good for anything. It's just destroying the whole humanity right now. But let me talk about a little bit of what's going on in uh, Gaza. Palestine, a lot of people are dying. More than 20,000 have died in this operation, Israel operation. But uh, things is turning like crazy now. A lot of countries are uh, going to recognize Palestine as a separate state. This is what's going to happen. It's kind of crazy, guys. Kind of crazy right now, but it's going to happen. Most of uh, a lot of countries, including France, uh, Italy, Norway, all those kind of most countries are now going to recognize uh, Palestine as a separate state. That means uh, this operation are backing fire to Israel. You all know that the uh, United States of America is supporting this operation in uh, Gaza. Even if uh, Democrats are trying to are pretending that they not they are not supporting this uh, uh, operation. They do, they do. So, but if you look at more, some of the the countries in uh, NATO, they're kind of going in another direction, and they are going to recognize uh, Palestine as a separate state. So I don't know if Palestine is going to have a, its own government or any kind of um, government setup, I don't know. But um, Netanyahu, he's going to be in trouble. I don't know if he's going to go to jail. I don't know what's going to happen. But most other countries now support uh, the decision of the international uh, court to go after uh, the prominent minister of Israel. It's weird. It's crazy. But it was even crazy since it started. Uh, I cannot go into this deeply because I don't even know a lot about it. But I'm telling you, a lot of people are dying right now. So you can all see what's going on on these videos. It's 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 so uh, it's it's so hard even to watch, guys. So hard to watch. So hard to watch. I think that's why. Uh, these countries are going, are kind of backing up. They are now trying to support uh, uh, the idea of stopping this war. But it, Israel doesn't do it. It just doesn't do it because uh, Netanyahu just said they don't need any, uh, any country to get into this. They're not going to stop it until they destroy Hamas, which is hard to do which is taking a rare civilian life for, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, so there's no way Iran and Spain say they will recognize the Palestine state deep in the Israel isolation. So Israel is going to be in trouble. No way Ireland and Spain said the Wednesday they would recognize a Palestine state, a historic but largely symbolic move that further deepens Israel's isolation. <clears throat> More than seven months into 
its uh, grinding war against Hamas in Gaza. Israel immediately denounced the decision. That makes sense. They will do that. They immediately uh, denounced uh, the decision and recalled its ambassador to the... So, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, of course. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said on Wednesday that Spain, Iran, and Norway recognizing Palestine, Palestinian statehood are sending a message to the Palestinian and the world that terror is accepted. That's Netanyahu saying. It's, it's yeah. Recognizing Palestine as a state was long regarded in the West as a pledge for concession in the peace process. Yeah, it's been they've been talking about this for a long time, but it's it's just a hard decision given the history in this part of the world. The Gaza war is leading to a change in thinking. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Everybody's watching how many of these kids that are dying like that, and they can't change change mind. That's true. Even French uh, presidents say that they say that they cannot, they're not going to allow this. Yeah, it's so sad what's going on. It's so sad what's going on. France says condition for recognizing Palestine as a state now met yet. Yeah, they still don't want to make that decision because remember, France and the US are all in narrow. So they it's hard to make that decision when the US doesn't support that. That's why they kind of back backing this the, the decision. Because I think uh Biden made the phone call to uh uh, Macron to stop the decision because it's, it was going to backfire. The U.S. believes a Palestinian state should be achieved through negotiation and no unilateral un recognition and has the power of vero at, yeah, you all know that. So, yeah, it's 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 so sad. It's so sad. I wonder what uh, uh, Erdogan is talking. He's talking about his uh, his uh, his position on this issue. Well, Erdogan is, a, you know, or uh, he's it's uh, he's a president of a Muslim uh, country. So his decision might be different. But he's not talking a lot on this issue so far. I don't really see him uh, a lot talking about this issue. Um, see if I can find anything about him. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, it's going to happen. It's going to happen because since the war started, uh, everybody's attention was kind of triggered. Yeah, so so far, uh, 145, 145 countries now recognize Palestine as uh, a separate uh, state. Uh, Israel war in Gaza since the October 7 attack has revived a global push for Palestinians to be given a state of their own. Yeah, it's going to happen. And that will be uh, a big change in the Middle East. It will be a big change in the Middle East. But uh, nobody knows, nobody knows. And also, no one want to uh, see this kind of killing continue uh, as well. There's not, a, there's not a, a good or bad in this. I'm telling you, uh, state Israel is fighting for the uh, uh, life because Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, 
Iran, they keep saying death to Israel, death to America. So if they got a chance, they will destroy Israel, they will, they will destroy America. That's in their belief. And Palestine, they are facing uh, crazy operations from Israel state. So no one really wants to see this. No one really wants to see this. But it is a very hard question. It's not an easy question because of the history. It's in the Bible. It's in the Quran. This is only God's uh, uh the only only God can can do anything on these kind of issues because it's said in the Bible that these two uh, part this this these two uh, uh, these two uh, family these two uh, religion belief they will be in fighting forever. It's in the Bible. It's not going to stop tomorrow. It's not going to stop. It's, nobody's going to stop this. Even if they give uh, Palestine state uh, uh, freedom to have their own government, it's not going to stop. It's in Bible. It's in Quran. This is going to continue no matter what. Only God knows when this is going to stop and how it's going to stop. If you read the Bible, you know what I'm talking about. So, prayer for this kid, prayer for this family. It's so sad to see these Palestinian people die like that. And it's also sad to see that there is not going to be a good solution for this issue because <clears throat> destroying Hamas will take or we took a lot, and it's already took a lot of kids' life. Nobody wants to see that. And also no one wants to see again another attack to Israel. So just pray, just pray, just pray. That's what I can say. Africa is going to read. So thank you very much, guys. I appreciate you being with me. I appreciate a very uh, second you spent with me. And... Uh, it's good to be with you. It's good to talk to you guys. I appreciate I appreciate people who are subscribing to the channel, people who are watching the channel. Why well, it's so very important to me. Uh, I love you and I will do all my best to give you what I feel like uh, the world needs. Thank you very much and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.